Hello and welcome back. So today I'm going to be doing my easy ISO explanation video and I'm going to explain to you exactly what ISO is in photography, how it works and how you can use it. To really understand ISO we need to look at light first and how it actually hits your camera sensor. So as you can see here now this is the inside of your lens. So as those diaphragm blades start to open out, they let in more light. As they close back in long again, they block more light from hitting your camera sensor. That's what your aperture does. It varies the actual width of these diaphragm blades. So it adjusts how much light comes into your camera and it also adjusts your depth of field. Then we have our shutter speed. And as you can see from the video in the corner, the shutter in your camera acts incredibly quickly. And what it does is it just opens for a split second. And when it does that, it just lets in a tiny amount of light. So the faster that shutter operates, the less light is going to hit your camera sensor. So how does ISO come into all this? Well, let's get into it and I'll walk you through it and talk you through it. Before I go any further, this is actually going to be the first of two videos on ISO. This one is the basic explanation of how ISO works in your camera and how you can use it. The second video then, I'm going to be going into more technical details on things like dual native ISO and what ISO you should be using for your camera. And you might very well be using the wrong one. That video is going to be coming very soon, so do stay tuned for that one. Now, if you do stick around for the next five minutes, I can nearly guarantee you, not only will you understand how ISO works, but you'll also be able to use it properly and also know how far you should push your ISO in your camera. Because I have a very simple little trick for that. And yes, it is really simple. So to keep things simple, let's just think of ISO as being an amplifier, because that's basically what it is. It amplifies the light coming into your camera. So think of it the same way as if you're, if you're playing guitar, let's say. You need a guitar amplifier if you're going playing in a reasonably large venue. Now then again, if you're sitting at home, you don't necessarily need that amplifier. And ISO is exactly the same thing. Sometimes you need, you need that amplification, other times you don't. Now the point to remember here is, anytime you use amplification, as well as amplifying the sound or the, the light coming in, you're also amplifying the noise. And this is the real key with ISO. Always remember that. The more you amplify anything, yes, the more you're going to amplify your guitar sound, but you're also going to amplify white noise too as well. So this is where the latest and greatest cameras come into it. Because the amplifiers in these are just slightly better. And when you're shooting at higher ISOs, generally speaking, depending on the resolution of the camera, of course, the images will be fractionally cleaner than on older cameras. I always tell people ISO is kind of a necessary evil. You need it sometimes, but it comes at a slight cost. It's always a case of robbing Peter to pay Paul, I suppose. So why turn up your ISO at all? Why would you ever need to do that? Well, in all honesty, I keep my ISO at its base level 95% of the time. It's only when I really need to boost my ISO, I boost it. Now, the one key here is I said base ISO level, and that is incredibly important because just because your camera can shoot at ISO 100 does not necessarily mean its base level is ISO 100. My camera's base level is ISO 64, but it will go down to ISO 32. But ISO 32 is going to give me more noise than ISO 64, even though it's a lower number. That's because it's not really ISO 32 and it's sort of digitally manipulated in the camera to give you an ISO 32 readout. So Google is going to be your best friend here. Simply type in your camera model number and then put in base ISO afterwards. Click on search and you're going to get a result telling you what your camera's base ISO is. Most cameras are either ISO 100 or ISO 200. So why would you shoot at higher ISOs? 
Well, to simply explain this, I'm going to give you a classical example. Let's say you go to a wedding and a couple get up for their first dance. And you say, oh, I want to take a photograph of that. But the problem is the light inside in the building or in the dance hall is actually quite low. There is very little natural light and there isn't an awful lot of artificial light inside. So you pop up your camera and you fire off your shot and you say, brilliant. And then you look at it quickly and you go, why is everyone so blurred? The reason everyone is so blurred is as you're taking the photograph and as the photograph is being taken, the couple are moving because they're dancing. If they're stationary, you'll probably get away with it. But if your camera is shooting at one thirtieth of a second or something, that's actually quite slow. And in one thirtieth of a second, the couple could have moved that much. So they're going to come out blurred. So what you need to do is shoot at a faster shutter speed. Because what's going to happen is it's going to take that photograph in an instant and the couple won't have moved. Or maybe they've moved very fractionally. So ideally speaking, instead of shooting at one thirtieth of a second, you'd ideally want to be up at one one hundred and twenty fifth of a second or something along those lines, just to make absolutely certain they're going to come out sharp. So how can you do that? Well, you've only two options. Firstly, you can open out your aperture. So in other words, it's going to let more light in. But if it's already at its lowest F number that you can shoot on your lens and the aperture is as wide as possible, then no more light is going to come in through that lens. So your next option is you need to change the way your camera sensor sees that light and you need to turn up that amplifier. And that's where ISO comes in. You can simply turn up your ISO and that's then going to boost the light level your camera thinks is coming into it and it's going to give you a picture. So what it's going to do is it's going to give you the ability of being able to shoot at 1 125th of a second, which is going to more or less freeze that couple as long as they're not really dancing quickly. But in most first dances, they wouldn't be. It's kind of a slow waltz a lot of the time. So you should be able to freeze that motion. So how far do you need to push your ISOs in order to be able to do that? Well, it depends on a lot of different things. And what I'm going to tell you next is probably going to really help you. So when I'm talking about changing my ISO and boosting my ISO, what do I mean? Well, let's say for argument's sake, your camera has a base ISO of ISO 100. If you're taking a photograph at ISO 100, the camera sees a specific amount of light coming in. If you go to ISO 200, now all of a sudden your camera is seeing twice as much light coming in. If you go to ISO 400, it's seeing twice as much again. So we're doubling each time we double our ISO. So the larger the ISO number, the more amplification. But always remember, it's coming at the cost of introducing noise. So how do we know how far should we push our ISO and what ISO should we use in a situation like that? This is one of the tips I generally tell clients on workshops. If you want to know how far you should push your ISO, because how far you should push your ISO and how far I should are going to be two different things. Because firstly, my camera is going to be different to your camera. And secondly, the way I look at a photograph and perceive noise could be completely different to you. I'm very critical of noise in an image because my clients are very demanding and rightly so. I take a photograph, it could go up on a billboard. It could go up in large print, it could go on media print. So the last thing they want is a noisy photograph. So what's right for you? Well, it's really incredibly simple. And this is my top tip on ISO for absolutely everyone. The first is always shoot at your base ISO unless you need more light in your camera. Tip number two then is simply to sit down at home at the kitchen table, plonk your camera down on the table, Fire off a couple of photographs. And what I want you to do is take a photograph at, let's say, ISO 400. Then I want you to take another photograph, hopefully exactly the same thing. Don't move the camera. So you take one at ISO 400. You take one at ISO 800, 1600, 3200, and ISO 6400. Next, what I want you to do is get those photographs, go to your computer, pop them in, and then edit those photographs the way you'd like to see them. In other words, in your normal editing style. And that's very important. 
because if you're the sort of person who loves to recover shadow details quite a bit, what you'll notice is when you start boosting your shadows, you're going to see a lot more noise. So if you take a photograph in ISO 400, it is going to be a lot cleaner than in a photograph taken at ISO 6400. What I'd advise you to do is take several photographs and get to a point where you say, ooh, ISO 3200, mm, that's a bit too far. Then you know going forward, ISO 1600 is as far as you're willing to push it without creating a massive amount of noise. The next time you're in a situation like that and you're at a wedding, I would set my camera to ISO 1600 and take those photographs. Because what it's going to do is, it's going to give you the most magnification of light with an acceptable amount of noise that's going to help freeze your subject while the couple are dancing on the dance floor. Because a sharp photograph, even though it might be fractionally noisy, is always going to be a lot better than a blurred photograph. Now the really good news here is, nowadays there's a vast array of editing applications that you can use for noise reduction. So even if you do shoot at high ISOs and you say, oh, I really don't like that, pop it into one of those applications and it will help reduce the noise for you. Now they do come at a slight cost. You can get kind of digital artifacts at times in your images and the other thing with it is, they can soften the photograph too as well. In reducing the noise, it mightn't be quite as detailed, but it is definitely going to be a lot better than that blurred photograph. I hope this video helped you and now ISO is quite a bit clearer in your own mind and you understand not only how it works, but how you can use it going forward in your photography. I'm also going to be putting up a video on shutter speed and a video on aperture too as well. And don't forget that other more in-depth video on dual native ISO and why you need to know about it is coming soon too as well. If you have any questions, please do feel free to ask them in the comments down below. Thanks again for watching and see you out there.